Okay, so first things first, go to Preferences, Gizmo, and select Local Coordinate. Now, this is just going to make your life a lot easier when it comes to moving the patterns around in the 3D workspace. And now I want you to go over to File, Open Project. And if you check the link in the description in the top comment, I've provided a link to this project file. So it's called Mail Project File. Click on Open. And over here, I'm just going to click on OK. And we are ready to get started. Now let's go to our 2D workspace and over here I want you to hold down the left mouse button and select rectangle. Then just left click, it's going to bring up this dialog box, click on OK. And on the right hand side over here, uh, just double click over here and call and just name this reference. And I'm also going to click on add and this is going to be the fabric for our socks. So I'll call this fabric and I'm going to change my color to just say darker gray. Now go back and select reference again and now over here by texture click on these four dots and in that folder that you've downloaded you'll see that there's a sock sewing pattern so click on OK and that's going to bring it into the workspace. So now we need to scale this up so click on this edit texture now left click to make sure this is selected and just drag diagonally over here just so I can increase the size. So I basically want to frame the back, the sole and the front uh, within this box. So now make sure you've got reference selected and then just decrease the opacity over here. Then go to the fabric and decrease the opacity as well. So when we're tracing this pattern, we'll be able to see the pattern we are tracing as well as the reference image. Now just make sure you've got fabric selected and let's start tracing this pattern. So hold the left mouse button down over here, select rectangle and I'm going to start tracing this pattern. So I'm going to add the curvature afterwards and I always do that. It just makes it a lot easier. I don't try and manually add curvature as I'm drafting the pattern. So to add this curvature, we're going to use this feature over here called Edit Curvature and just click and drag this down. Now if I go to the Edit Pattern, you'll see I've got these anchor points on here and this just helps me to refine the shape a lot better. Okay, so there we go, we've got our back pattern. Okay, so let's draft the back pattern and if you're wondering now I've got these numbers to show up, in earlier versions of Marvelous Designer you can right click and go to Show Line Length in MD10, you go to this icon and select this, but these numbers won't really be that important in this tutorial, but I thought I would mention that anyway. Okay, so let's create the front. So go to the rectangle, draw a rectangle till there. Let's go to edit curvature and drag this down. So you can see this is really simple, very basic stuff. And just using these anchor points to match that curvature. Right, there we go. So we've got the front and now we just need to create the sole. So for the sole, we're going to grab the rectangle, drag a rectangle like this. Now let's add curvature at the top. All right, go to our edit pattern, adjust these anchor points. And now here for the bottom, while I've got edit curvature selected, let me select one of these dots and bring them in. And now I can add curvature. Go to my edit curvature, uh, sorry, my edit pattern, and drag this out. So there we go, we've got all three patterns. Now I can select them, so I go to the uh, transform pattern, hold down shift, and just drag them out of this cube. So we've got our reference image over here in the 3D workspace. I can move that to the right hand side, then I can right click, go to freeze, so that it doesn't get affected by any simulation, and I also want to hide that 3D pattern. So our pattern has been drafted, so we can go back to fabric and bring the opacity all the way back up to 100, so we can see everything. So when we're creating socks, and this is always the case with characters, you can see that this foot is directly on this grid pattern, and even if we try and simulate this on the, f on the feet, we won't be able to get an accurate simulation on the underside of the foot. And that's because this is directly in contact with the grid. So something we need to do in the program is go to Preferences, Simulation Properties, and over here by Ground, if you click on this arrow, you'll see that Collision is enabled. So we need to deselect Collision so that there won't be any ground collision over here and will allow this fabric to simulate correctly. There'll be some gravity and, you know, weight being applied onto the actual sock once it's been sewed on and we won't have any collision issues. Now go ahead and on the left hand side of here, put this on thin textured surface and the reason why I'm doing that is because you'll see one part of this pattern is darker than the other side. Now maybe I should make this a little bit lighter so you can see that a bit easier. So you can see this is a lot darker and this is the normal, so this should always be facing the character. So with the sole, we want to bring this down. Now this front region over here on the pattern is where the toes are supposed to be situated. So rotate this like this. Now you'll notice that 
our dark pattern is on the underside but the way I'm positioning this pattern is correct so in order to bring that dark region back to this side I just right click and go to flip normal okay there we go now just put this underneath the foot now depending on how big your character's feet are you might need to adjust that pattern make it bigger uh, but usually this just works perfectly fine and if I need to of course I can make this a bit smaller there we go we've got this situated on the sole just make sure it's underneath now of course I can go below the grid because there's no there's no ground collision and there we go right so we've got the sole positioned now let's position the back so just bring this down and over here with the normal you can see the normals facing on the incorrect side so I need to right click and go to flip normal and just move this into position so the last piece is the front so just bring this down right so there's an additional uh, detail we need to add on to this front pattern just to get this to actually be positioned correctly and that is to add an internal line so over here if I hold my left mouse button down I can select internal polygon line and you see we still have these two dots over here so just click to create your first internal line point and once you get to the other point just left click and or do sorry double click over here to uh, create the final line so now we've got an internal line on there and what we need to do now is we need to go to fold arrangement select this internal line and just bend this up right and then now I can move this back into position and now hopefully you can see how this is actually going to be sewed right so we've got all of our pieces in position okay so sewing this is actually very simple and I'm gonna do this in the 3d workspace but you can see exactly what's happening over here so I'm gonna go to my segment sewing so this gets sewed onto this piece do that for the other side as well this gets sewed onto the underside now if your sewing over here happens to be tangled uh, just go to this edit sewing and you can right click and go to reverse sewing you always want straight lines like this okay so I'm gonna go back to my segment sewing and this piece gets sewed onto this area now you can see that's tangled so I'm gonna go to my edit sewing reverse sewing but you'll notice that this a piece that we've sewed on here doesn't go all the way around and we need to make sure this entire sewing region goes right to this end point so the easiest way to do that in the 2d workspace once I've got edit sewing selected on this dot just click and drag this point until you reach this point so I'm extending that sewing region so if yours looks exactly like this you're good to go if you press spacebar or this icon over here you're going to simulate this and you're officially have a sock so you'll still notice that parts of the character will be poking through and that's because the particle distance on here is really low it's currently on 20 so I can bring mine down to 5 right now if your computer is running too slow uh, then go to 10 and I'll press simulate and you can see it fixes that issue immediately uh, if you still have parts of the character poking through uh, something else you could do is over here by object browser if I just scroll my mouse wheel to scene and then on my avatar I right click and go to select all faces over here by the skin offset if you increase this number you're basically offsetting this garment from the character so it should hide parts of that character underneath but mine's on two and that's perfectly fine and yeah there we go we've got a sock if you feel like there's too much loose fabric on the sock just go to transform pattern drag a box over all of these patterns then double click on the point in the middle and all of these points turn orange so when I drag diagonally I'm basically doing a uniform scale so now I'm making the sock smaller uh, which basically means it's going to make it tighter and there won't be that much loose fabric like there was before uh, but you can just use that to adjust the size of the sock and if you wanted to extend the length of these socks you just select these lines hold on shift and bring them up so you you can see I can go all the way up and make these really high socks uh, but what's really cool about this this could maybe be a leather boot as well if you spent more time in here so the possibilities are endless once you have the shape created so I'm just gonna undo that I'm gonna make the socks a little bit taller and then nearby fabric select fabric and by preset I've provided a sock fabric preset in that folder over here 
So I just click on open, but this fabric preset is basically de cotton. But play around with the different fabric presets, see what they do. Maybe you get different results that you like. But I'm just using this one. Okay, and then another cool thing you can maybe do with these socks over here at the top, select these lines, right click and go to offset internal line. And I'm going to do this by a value of 20. So now you can see I've got this internal line selected. Now if I go to fold arrangement, select this line, I can rotate this forward. So it's like folding the top part of the sock onto itself like that and press simulate. Now this region is darker because it is the normal, but it doesn't matter too much. Um, if I add some thickness on here, so if I select the entire sock, all of these pieces and nearby add thickness, I put this on a value of two, press enter. And then over here, just change this to thick textured surface. This is what our sock looks like with some additional thickness on it. And we've got this area rolled up. So if you like that, cool. So don't be afraid to experiment. Maybe bring some images into the program as well. So I'm going to go to Fabric, click on Copy, and then I'm going to click on these four dots. And I just found this random image of some pizza because who doesn't love pizza, right? <laughs> and I'm going to select all of these pattern pieces. And over here by Fabric, I'm going to put that on Fabric Copy 1. Select that fabric and then just make this a little bit lighter. And now I've got some pizza socks. And to adjust the scale of this image, you just go to transformation and texture. And then you can choose whatever value you want this to be on. So there we go, some pizza socks in Marvelous Designer. You can see just how quick and easy this is to do. And you can also, let me just bring this back to Fabric 1. If you wanted to, you could also customize the sock itself. So maybe if I go to this internal polygon line and draw a pattern like this. All right, let it just create the pattern. All right, I got that internal line selected. I can right click, go to cut and sew. So it cuts this off and then sews it back on. So you can see this is a separate part on the sock. And then let me just copy this. I'm just showing you how you can customize the socks as well. Then you've got just that piece on the sock that has a different material applied onto it. Okay, so have fun. Create some awesome socks. Put some crazy patterns on them. Yeah, I hope you learned something useful from this. Okay, so we created our sock, but our character is missing a sock on the other foot. So how do we create another sock? Very simple. Just go to Transform Pattern, select all of this, Control C, Control V, and left click to paste that. And then in the 3D workspace, just move this to the other foot. Now just rotate it and position it the correct way. I know this still looks like it's angled like a right, a left foot sock but you'll see once you press simulate it'll sort itself out very easily and there we go so now we've got two socks on our character and you can see just how simple and easy it is to create socks within marvelous designer and then one last thing that you could do to these socks if if you wanted to you could select all of these internal lines you could right click and cut and sew so you can cut these off as its own separate pattern then you can have your own material and different colors on there and you can do whatever you want so it's really cool it's a simple pattern but you can see how you can really start custom customizing this to get it to your liking and now just one last tip let's say that you feel like there's still too many wrinkles and folds and fabric on the socks you can obviously make the socks smaller but another way to do that without affecting the pattern let's say i want to select let's focus on the sock the back and the front and here on the right under simulation properties, we have shrinkage, weft, and warp. So this is like extending or adding fabric horizontally, and this does it vertically. So if I bring this value down, like let's say 80 by 80, notice how these wrinkles are going to disappear on the sock. So it makes it a lot tighter and more form-fitting. So that's the easiest way to do that without, you know, adjusting the pattern itself. Okay, so I thought I would just mention that. And then I'm just going to be plugging one of my own products over here in the tutorial, which is what I use to actually texture the sock that you see on the thumbnail. So I've got a product called 56 Fabric Materials. All of these materials are created at 4K resolution. They are all 100% tileable. So if you're looking for any type of fabric uh, patterns that you want to use with your t-shirts or your socks or towels, anything fabric related, I've gone ahead and created this pack for you. So I've, I've put a uh, link down in the description of the top comment. And this is a great way to support me as an artist and to support all of this content that I provide for you guys on YouTube. 
Right, so as always, you guys are super awesome. Thank you so much for the support on this channel. Stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials, and goodbye.